Hey everybody, it's Tom with Buxton Auto in Fayette, Texas. It's been a while since I've put out a video. Today's video is a little different. What you may or may not know about me is I don't just have a little tiny car lot. I also own a shop. And today we're going to talk about car dealers. No, we're not. I'd edit that out, but I'm not that smart. Today's video, we're gonna talk about how shops make money. I get tired of hearing how the shop screws you because the part was only $100 and they charged you $500. Or we get the phone call of, hey, I've brought my own parts. How much would you charge just to put this on for me real quick? So we're gonna sit down and talk about how shops make money, why prices are the way they are, and then you can decide if the, if the shop has actually screwed you or not. All right, so have you ever gone to a five-star restaurant walked in with a piece of chicken in a bag and told the chef, hey, I've brought my own chicken. How much for me to just get it cooked up nice with maybe a potato? I bet you've never done that. Have you ever gone to your lawyer's office and said, hey, I need you to file this brief. I know it only takes you 15 minutes to do it, so I don't want you charging me for the full hour. I bet you haven't done it. So why then is it when folks go to an auto repair shop some people want to tell that shop just how much money they should be able to make. They've already decided in their head how much profit is too much or that they're getting screwed because of a price of a product. Let me tell you guys, if you ever sat through Facebook uh, groups, like we have a couple local ones here, there are people all over the place complain, 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 and shops are a ripoff and blah, 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 blah. I get it. But I don't, and I want to show you why and how that is. So in a nutshell, there are two ways that shops make money. One, we sell our mechanics time. Two, and this is the part that might surprise people, we sell parts. If you need a part for your vehicle, we're going to buy that part. And then, because we're buying it, then because we're responsible for the warranty on it, then, because if something goes wrong, we'll need to do it over again if it's on warranty. We mark that part up and make a little bit of money on it. Secondly, shops don't go by, well, it took our mechanic 10 minutes to do it, so we're going to bill you 10 minutes. That's not how it works, guys. In a nutshell, there's a big guidebook with all kinds of different jobs that mechanics might do. And that book gives us a certain number of what's called flag hours. A flag hour is this is the flat rate you're going to get paid. So for example, if the book says that this alternator pays 1.5 flag hours, that's what we are going to charge our customer, 1.5 flag hours. It doesn't matter if the mechanic can get the job done in 30 minutes because he has a ton of efficient tooling that he's purchased over a period of time and has 20 years of experience, or if it's a brand new mechanic that has one little set of tools and it takes him three hours. Either way, that mechanic gets paid that 1.5 hours. I collect 1.5 hours as the shop and that's the billable rate. And then my mechanic collects 1.5 hours no matter how much time it takes him, better or worse. Now, you needed an alternator. You can go to O'Reilly or AutoZone or Napa or Rock Auto or Amazon and buy one for $89. What happens if you bring in your own alternator and you brought the wrong one? Now your car's up on our lift, it's disassembled, and we find out it's the wrong one. What would happen then? Next, what would happen if a week after we put your alternator on for you, it quit working? Let me tell you, chances are better than not that you're going to feel like we did something wrong and your alternator quit working. Because hell, it was brand new, it's only been here a week. When in the reality is, the part may have very well failed. This creates a friction between the shop and the customer who wants to bring their own parts. Therefore, we don't do that. And as a matter of fact, it's hard to find a shop that'll let you bring your own parts because you are effectively robbing that business of the profit they need to sustain life. Okay, we sell parts, 
We sell labor. That's it. So prices will be higher than you can do it at home for. Prices will be higher than the guy that you're going to hire on Craigslist that's going to come to your house with a half a dozen tools, put your alternator on, collect your cash, and disappear. What happens if something goes wrong later? I bet you you don't find him again. Just something to think about here, guys. So the next question or statement that I hear from people that really just infuriates me, I alluded to at the beginning of the video, and that's, this shop ripped me off. This part was $100. They charged me $700 to install it. Okay. Well, for starters, most shops are going to give you an estimate before they do the work. And you're going to sign off or acknowledge or whatever. This is the job you want done. And this is what it costs. Then you, as the consumer, have the choice. No, I'm not paying $700 for that job. I will find it cheaper. Or, yes, I will pay the $700 because it will help me have peace of mind knowing that if this job goes bad in, say, the 12-month warranty period, I'll bring it back and it'll get fixed again and I won't have to pay. So you're not getting screwed. You were given an option. Fix the car for this price with shop A or don't. And then if you want to, go to shop B, C, D, E, Craigslist, Facebook, mobile mechanic, whatever, until you get the price that works for you. But if you agree that the job should be done for $700 and you're willing to pay for it, you did not get screwed. What you need to remember is that when you go to a business to have something done, a business needs to make a profit to be viable. Just some things to think about with my business. If I pay my mechanic, I will tell you that he gets a lot of my hourly rate. Okay? I will tell you that we mark our parts up. And I will tell you that an industry standard is the shop has to be at a 50 or 60% gross margin. What does that mean? Well, in a nutshell, that means that with many shops, and the numbers can be 55 to 45 or 60 to 70 or 30, or it just depends because not all jobs are the same. Some jobs pay better than others. For argument's sake, let's just say it's a 50% margin. So of that ticket that was $700, and you got screwed because the part was 100. 50% margin means it cost me $350 to do that job. So that could mean I paid my mechanic $200 and the part was $150 to get a good reliable one with a warranty. So I've now paid $350 and I've collected from you $700. That's not screwing you. You agreed to this 700. Now let's think also, okay? Why does this mechanic make this much money? Well, for starters in the auto industry, they generally have to have their own tools. My guy here at Integrity has thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars worth of specialty tools that make his work easier. He's also been doing this for 30 years and has that much experience on what is wrong and how to fix it. Those are skill sets that the average person doesn't have and they demand a payment. Next, we've got the part, we've paid him, we've put it on, the car runs, you're coming in to pay. So you're gonna think, I've made $350. No, 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 no. What you are forgetting is simple things like I have rent, I have electricity, I have a expensive insurance policy. I have a telephone, I have the internet. I have an advertising budget, how did you get here? I have hand towels I have to buy, I have soap I have to buy. All of these things are expenses necessary to run a business. So just because a shop charges you $700 for a part that you could buy on Amazon for $100 does not mean that you have been screwed. I always tell people, if you have the skill set and the time to do a job, do it yourself. Save that money. 
bank that money for when a big job that you can't handle comes in, then you can put that money you would have spent on a small job into the big job. You know, some people are perfectly capable of putting on their own water pump, changing a battery, doing brakes or shocks. Others are not. So if you need to buy a service, don't feel that you're being screwed because the part only costs a small portion of the bill. Like I said in the example up front, your attorney that you would go to, you wouldn't dream of telling him how much he could charge you. You wouldn't dream of telling a chef at a fancy restaurant how much his chicken breast should cost. But yet in the auto industry, particularly online forums, people like to tell you how to get screwed. Let me just say, most shop owners completely stand up, honest guys, trying to make a living. Half the money that comes in goes right out the door immediately, just to parts and labor. So at the end of the month, it's not as great as you might think. Obviously it's good or we wouldn't be here, but there's nothing wrong with making a profit. And I think people need to remember that. When you go in business, you are going in business to make a profit. So why as a consumer would you not expect that business to make a profit? And why would you have in your head how much money that business should make on your job when you don't know exactly what goes into it? As I always tell people, I'm not the cheapest shop. And I have friends that are more expensive and I have friends that are less expensive. What it really boils down to when picking a shop is find somebody with a good reputation that you personally can get along with and you trust. And when you find that shop, stick with it. But don't begrudge them a profit for doing the work that you either can't or don't want to do. All right, so that's today's rant video. I've been thinking about posting this for a while. I probably get a little heat from people that disagree with me, but that's the reality, guys. Shops are in business to make a profit. You don't necessarily know how much money they have in these jobs. Absolutely, if you could do it at home, you'll do it a lot cheaper. But some people would rather trade their money for time. If you don't have a lot of money, you probably need to spend your time. As you get older, you make a little bit more money, you'd probably rather spend your money and keep your time for yourself. But most shops, totally honest. I promise you the next video will be something more car related. I've got some other videos that need to come out, but I want to put something out because it's been quite a while. And this has been a topic that's been on my mind for a long time. And uh, I hope it helps when you go to get a quote for your next job as a, a, at an auto shop to understand where these shop owners and managers are coming from and why costs are the way they are. Thanks for watching me. Give me a like and subscribe if you'd like. I'd really appreciate it. Y'all have a good one.